So there are a few topics which I would like to cover today. First, I would like to talk about briefly about information security management process. Then I'll, I'll like to talk about, about the current climate. Why it is critical? Is it true that we are sitting on a huge risk of skill gap? But I believe there's a, if there is a risk, there's, a, there's opportunity as well. It's up to us how we get most from that opportunity to be successful. So I'll be sharing really interesting um, research around the skill gap and uh, how we can be competitive in this, uh, in this environment. COVID-5, one of the business uh, framework, which I'll, I'll take you through briefly in, in coming slides, came up with the, the list of behaviors which we specifically look for in information security professionals. And we all take you through what are those behaviors we, we, should, we should ideally organizations or employer look for in, 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 in information security professionals. What are the what are different cert certifications? How employer get confidence that their existing current em employees and um, and in future employees will have the right skills behaviors? Is there any hard and fast rule? Even these certifications give enough edge and to employee to monopolize their existing in the organization. So I'll talk you through what are the certifications we have. Today I'm representing ISAGA. What is it? What they do? I'll talk you through in coming slides. And ISAGA offers four renowned um, certifications in GRC, Governance Risk and Compliance Space. So I'll take it uh, take, uh, take through guys as well. We have so many certifications in the industry, in the market. So many certifications. How to identify? What could be the benchmark? What could be the yardstick which we should look for? I'll, I'll take you through with that, that one as well. And the, the topic is responsible information security management. What do you mean by responsible? Why? Why I'm talking about responsible? What do you mean by responsibility? I'll talk about this one as well. And in the end, I'll take you through the topics which we have covered so far, how it can pass all into IT governance. Briefly, I'll touch upon that one as well. One of the critical asset of any organization is information. It, it's just like a blood which flows across organization. Lives and livelihood depends on the continuation of information systems and its correct operations. With the current uh, complexities of um, software, hardware and networking, the demand and need of to manage information security is becoming more pressing. When we talk about IT or information technology department, we are automatically talking about technology, systems, infrastructure. We need people to maintain, to operate these technology. And we need a process how we are providing services to business as a service provider, as, as IT always provides services. So how we are providing services business to, so they can run this silent smooth business so they can make money. And information system, information security management is a systematic approach to secure inf information by using risk management activities. With regard to today context, I like information security management can also be described as a as a as a as a, a consolidated list of a skill set to manage <coughs> to manage security diverse behaviors user uh, user awareness and increase uh, increase cost Decision makers, IT managers, technical staff need well-educated skill set in ISM for the organizations. This looks like an ideal world. We would love to have this. When you talk about IT operations, we love to have this. Do you think it is possible to have when we are when we are running 50 or 100 our 500 employee organization it is difficult but the problem is when there are so many people involved in any task it's hard to get what we want 
it, it is not possible to have always the skilled labor. We can get it, but we will we could end up in paying a lot of money. A good package. It is hard and difficult for organization to build confidence that the the uh, the workforce is fully uh, is is fully aware of the emerging trends. Today, 24 by 7 business cycle needs organization to be organization infrastructure and operation to be always up. Losing a day in transactions can mean monetary loss as well as preparation loss. So much, so much research going on in technology, emerging technologies. If you talk about threat, threat landscape is, is evolving. It is dynamic in nature. We can't stop it. We can't eliminate it. We can minimize it. Organizations need to think end-to-end -end vulnerability to protect themselves, to protect the organizations in a proactive manner. Because of this current changing climate of technology and threat, both human and from technical aspects, the demand, the need for, for trained, certified professional to secure the uh, information, information security is increasing critical. Today, I would like to focus. Uh, for, uh, today, I would like to focus on people attribute of ISM, as I believe that managing technology and having a process would be would be would be manageable if you have a qualified and skillful workforce. IC Square International Information System Security. Certification Consortium, IC Square, conducted a global workforce uh, study, a global, global um, information workforce study in partnership with Alan Booth Hamilton and Frost and Sullivan consultancy firms. They identified a huge gap between the supply of qualified information security professionals and the demand for skilled workers for managing information security and cyber world. That study shows that the workforce will grow at a compound annual growth rate of 11.3% globally between now and 2017 and calling 2 million new uh, additional 2 million workers. You can, you can check online. I'm happy to share the research. The, the gap in the workforce is not new. <coughs> However, the issue is not acute, it's severe. How could we get the skilled labor? Do you have any quick fix, any silver bullet? How organization could can get confidence that the employees are getting the right information to cope with the current, current situation? What are the new trends which could enable them to come up with the, their training, uh, uh, in-house training? It is one thing to know that there is a gap between the need of information security professional and, uh, and demand for, for, for the new worker. The another point is what specific skill set are, are in, in need, are specific in need, are highest in demand. The field of information security is non-monolithic. It depends. It it made up of diverse set of skill set, which in, in com, uh, com, comprises of tec, 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 uh, technical planning management. That study, the study which I gave a reference, that study used industry frameworks. I, I hope I believe you. Most of people, most of you people will be familiar with this one. That study used industry framework developed across the globe, which includes frameworks from European Union and uh, USA National Initiative for Cybersecurity Education, NICE. They also get input from UK and Japan. It helped them to identify, to get the specific details around the desired skill set which they can use to develop a new workforce so they can they can get uh, the right skill sets they can also use this information to build or develop university curriculum and 
government or, or different organizations can use that's for their in-house training the task i'm sitting on different working group that's the work which we are doing right now we are not working on the job profiles we are just focusing on what are the right skills we should look for i talk about all the names which i mentioned so just focusing what are the skills we should have the eu system european union system is developed by european committee for standardization after getting input from professionals government organizations across EU, european union and they came up with 23 job profiles and they divided into uh, six uh, IT security space business management, technical, design, services operation, development, and support. They cluster these job profiles into five segments with an action verb. On another hand, we have nice cybersecurity workforce framework which uh, which broadly talk about different activities seven broad uh, aspects in with regard to information assurance most organization operate symmetrically but when we talk about information security professionals they uh, they they, uh, they work in asymmetrically environment study uncovered that to be success successful information security we need a diverse set of skill sets beyond the technical knowledge so more recommended skills so in addition to ic square study which i, I use so far university of phoenix in usa they also conduct the same sort of on same lines about a, a, a survey of uh, study a research on what are the co right competencies and skills we ideally should look for from information security professionals mostly they are aligned with what IC Square came up in addition to that they, they mentioned that individual must have business analysis skills acumen skills diplomacy and negotiation skills customer services marketing and sales skill outspoken and more importantly, individual should have right cultural awareness. So all these, if there's another one uh, uh, research by what the ideal, what the ideal uh, skills we should look for from security team, CISO, these are the, uh, uh, the skills we ideally look for. So if we see, if we conclude, if we consolidate, if we map with all these skills, we came up that we don't, it is not necessary to have only technical skills, communication skills, the leadership skills. Diplomacy, negotiation skills, how to sell yourself, how to, vis how to be visible. If any process is running silent and smooth, it is not necessary you are visible. If there's a noise, then you are visible. But instead of creating noise, how can we sell ourselves? How can we market ourselves? Let's talk about behaviors. Behavior, behavior for individual is one of the success factor in managing information system, information security activities. COVID-5, Control Objective for Information and Related Technology, identified eight behavior which could help, which contribute in building uh, secure, secure aware culture. Okay. Certifications, professional development, uh, professional de development validates skills through certifications to ensure that user have right and uh, right knowledge competencies in performing their day-to-day -day work so there are different type of certifications you can find in industry in market general certifications technical certification and specialized certifications general certification understanding um, uh, knowledge high level um, uh, knowledge for example understanding about IT or information security on a high level. Technical certifications, vendor specific, 
Perfect specific operating systems or any systems one. When you talk about a specialize, we can talk about governance certifications. We can talk about audit certifications. I'll take you through what are the, those certifications. I specifically mentioned the meaning, the formal meaning which I get from uh, from internet, from from dictionary. But why certify? Any, what's the need? What's the demand? We mentioned, we discussed. Sorry, I discussed briefly in the in the starting of the slide deck. That's the demand. That's because I'm not telling. You're not telling. Industry is telling. They're spending thousands, millions of pounds in, in identifying what are the skill gaps. My connectivity is I can see when I sit with them. Either I talk about GCHQ or e skills. The demand, the way the government is pushing to get things done. The skills, the demand for for service. Is if I talk about cyber security. Two million Cisco identified a million by 2017. Two million. So that's the reason. To, in, if we have so many skilled workers, how do we distinguish? How do we identify? So these are the reasons. Some of the reasons to become more to go towards certification. We have right skills. How to justify? How can how can I stand out in this environment that I have right skills? How do I know that you have right skills? So one of the reasons, one of the yardstick we could use. To justify, yes, I got these skills. I have independent assurance. Third line of defense. There are so many certifications in the industry. So many certifications. Different organizations are offering these certifications for because of breadth of uh, information technology, compliance, risk, governance, security, forensics e-discovery so many different certification how to identify what could be the best one let's talk about briefly step by step so these certifications are provided by different organizations different professional bodies are running and governing these certifications so now let's talk about what are the those renowned certification which ISACA offer let I'll now I'll start focusing on ISACA now These are the certifications governed by ISACA, Information Systems Audit and Control Association. Who are we? Sorry. We are the only one. ISACA is the only professional body across globe who caters and look after IT auditors and IT governance professionals. We operate in more than 80 countries and we have more than 200 chapters. For example, in UK, we have five chapters. I, I belong, I represent I London chapter, second largest in the world, more than 3,000 members. We just like, and we, op, we run these certifications. Let me give you a quick glimpse and then I'll take you on the detail page. CISA, Certified Information Systems Auditor. So far, it's the last year details, I don't know, I don't have the for this year, 2014, we have more than 100,000 certified. CISA, Information System Auditor, talks about it recognizes uh, individuals' uh, ability to perform information systems audit with regard to processes, um, con CIA confidentiality, integrity, availability, IT operations, and um, uh, and maintenance of, uh, of IT department. I'll take you in detail. When we talk about CISM, Information Security Manager, it it's um, CISM talks about it assess it measures whether an individual can set up and manage information security pro information security program across organization. When we talk about govern governance of enterprise IT, it recognizes it's individuals ability and it's uh, around is awareness about um, governance applications and scope when you talk about risk and information systems control it re recognize individuals ability to uh, around risk management 
and control monitoring and implementation. So these are some facts. Now, <clears throat> these certifications, as I mentioned, we are the only one on professional body. Mostly we spend time, we got so much support, we have a different think tanks. That think tanks, we don't have think tanks from, in, from, in, in, from only academia. It's a combination, it's a mixture of industry and academia. We work, we sit together and come up with all different standards. For example, I'd like to give a reference of IT audit standards, which as I work as an IT auditor, <clears throat> I was used to follow ISACA standard. I'm not the only one, I was not the only one. There's different organization, this is one of the standard which we follow as an IT auditor defined by ISACA. COVID-5, BP has implemented, adopted COVID-5 from the last five, six years. Right now we have a COVID-5, but we have COVID-4, 3, 2. So these frameworks we have adopted, we follow. We follow the guidelines internally, internal audit, our group audit and group control. They use uh, um, standard defined by ISACA. Again, we are is a volunteer organization, so we work just like a big global family. We work together, so everyone has to play its role. To some extent, again, in, in a specific domain in GRC, we are based setting organization just like ISO, ISO came up with 27,001, 31,000, 25, different. But when you talk about, and, and, and for example, COVID, yes, we, we feel proud on COVID and all different uh, the, uh, research we came up. So we have these certification, you have seen those uh, details, how many people have, have done so, uh, those certifications. We have guidance practices as I give a reference of IT information uh, systems audit guidelines. So we have, for example, in London chapter, we have a monthly meeting. So we use as a networking opportunity because our members has to have CPEs. So by attending those uh, meetings, they get CPEs. So that's a great opportunity to work and uh, have a good interaction so we can share what are the uh, what are the issues and what are the best practices in their organization, my organization? So we are just as I mentioned, we have more than ten thousand members across the globe. So I'd like to give you a brief background about F each of these certifications. First of all, CISA, just like to just like a CPNCA. ACA Enterprise Demand Knowledge and Expertise. CISA has five domain. When you talk about this certification, in that certification you have to appear in an exam. It's a four hour exam and the curriculum of that exam comprises of five domains. First of all, what's the process of auditing? It comprises 14%. How it plays its role in governance and management of IT. If we acquire, develop and implement, what are the shoes, what are the risks, what are the controls we should look for, that talk about in detail. And these documents, these curriculum didn't come up with only by academics. It is a combination, as I mentioned, uh, um, uh, it's a combination of think tank by industry and academics, both of them. Let's talk about CISM, security manager, as I mentioned, how um, it basically it um, recognizes whether individual have enough knowledge, understanding to manage and implement security program across enterprise. So, what are the topics they cover? They ask in this certification. Again, try to figure out that every every certification certification talks about governance. They don't talk spe especially only IT. What business thinks so? of? What business want from IT? We provide services. We have to, it should be a bottom up rather than top bottom. What business wants, we have to give them because we support, we have, uh, that's, that's the money comes. So that's we talk about governance in, in the first domain. And then if there is an incident, how to manage from security point of view, risk management, what are the risk management process and how to uh, um, provide solution from risk regard to compliance as well. 
in <clears throat> program development and management from information security point of view. Please talk about detail. What are the risks? What are the KPIs? What are the KRIs? What are the details we should look for when if you're going to hire any 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 uh, individual in that space? C guide is the governance one. Is the is the uh, yes to, in 2008 I believe so. Yep, direction 2008. It purely talks about value delivery. How we can get more from IT. What is the re uh, return on investment? How we can work together? How we can talk and understand this language which business wants? So that's the bits and pieces we cover in this one. And the C-Risk. C-Risk and CISA, Information Systems Auditor one. Just like a two, two certification on other, other side of tables. One talk about auditing, one talk about how to work internally. For example, I said in, uh, before joining uh, the DS, Digital Security Team, I was part of Control and Compliance Team. So we, was, we were representing IT and we have internal auditor comes. So we were used to the same language, but that's the real example, CSA and CRIS. More or less same information, but from a different angle, from a different lens. Now, how to identify? I talk about so many certification, right? So much information. How to identify? What could be the best one? What could be the best yard escape, yard stick you could use? We are not, because we are in this, in this, um, in this climate, we have different organizations in different industries. We have to follow some standard, right? By, by default, we have to follow some standards. So what we are doing, what ISACA does, we mapped all our certification with these standards. I believe you heard about SAFIR, ISSP, ISSP here, and CCP, uh, uh, and the Knights from the States. And this is the new one which GCSQ came up with. So all these certification, ISACA certification, are comply, not sorry, apologies, map, align with these standards. So that's one of the yardstick I, I'm, I can, I, I'm proud to say that because I have done this mapping in UK, but mostly has been done in, in the States. But regarding these two ones, I'm working right now. If, you, if I talk about NICE, ISACA came up with the Cyber Security Nexus program. It is fully based on NICE. So we don't say, we don't use in a different language. We don't create a new cottage industry. We follow what is industry says, what are the best practices. Accountability, my favorite topic. We love talking. We are humans, we love talking. We have so many ideas, we love sharing. But when it comes on implementing, I assume, we assume, that department could be the best place to get it done. We work on assumptions. It doesn't happen in practical world. That's one of the situations um, I can say, even my current place and my previous places, network rail and other places. It happens. We assume so much that we have we don't have a clear accountability. So in building <coughs> in in a, in, a in a building a continuous uh, information security uh, successful information security management we need to have uh, uh, top down and bottom up awareness and acceptance of responsibility it should start from board of directors to until uh, all the for, for example ceo chief executive officer till some intern must be held accountable for their role and responsibility for their work they have to be they have to be accountable for their work it would be good to use RACI. i believe you use in your in your organizations i believe you even uh, in, in, in in your study in academics but it's as a, as a reminder it would be good it's just a sample one so who's accountable who's responsible who could be consulted who could be informed it would be better to define role and responsibilities by using RACI. It is not necessary that information security officer is the only one, is only accountable for aligning people, process, technology. No. 
security practices should be implemented across organization. Everyone must be held accountable. Everyone. People is the weakest link in the whole chain. So, when you talk about information security governance, it means we are talking about controlling and directing of, uh, of information security. We shouldn't be confused in comparison with information security management. ISM talks about is uh, what, are, <clears throat> what are the decisions made based on risk uh, to mitigate the risk. Who is supposed to, who is accountable, who is supposed to take, it should be defined by IS governance. And again, it also give an idea where we want to be, where we are, in by following CMM or, 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 or the capability for maturity assessment. And ISO 27,000 would be one of the best places as well. These are the services, these are the facilities uh, provided by and support, uh, uh, offered by ISACA. And that's we do work for Cadmium. Thank you very much for your time, for listening. I'm on time? Good. <laughs> Thanks.